The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, good morning. Welcome to this webinar on the PMI ACP Community of Practice, the content support team. And I'm Joseph Flayev. And I am Derek Heather. And we are going to share with you a bunch of stuff today about the ACP Community of Practice guide to the guide to the ACP. Um, a little agenda I have lined up for you all here. Um, I'm going to do introductions first, uh, talk about the vision of the ACP guide and why we're doing it, what we're doing it for, what the value is to uh, our, our members. We'll do a little demo of the wiki and the how to use it. Derek's going to show us some little tips and tricks in there because it's you know not as intuitive as you would hope, but uh, it, it is a useful tool. We'll talk a little bit about what we're thinking about for team structure, how we're going to organize the, the folks on this team to uh, deliver this this uh, guide. We'll talk briefly about collaboration tools. I'd love to hear the tools that you guys like to use, but since we're all distributed around the world, we're going to be doing some distributed development of this content. And then we'll end up talking about the iteration schedule and close the, the webinar. Think in probably half hour to 45 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, depending on uh, how much is in the wiki, uh, wiki how to and how many questions you have. So please feel free to post questions. Um, you can either raise your hand, and on the little toolbar you on the right-hand side of your screen, most people on the right-hand side, there's a little raise your hand button. Um, can everybody please raise their hands if they can hear me? OK, good. I'm, here. I'm seeing hands being raised all over. And, all right, thank you. And you can click it again, and yeah, good job. And you're putting your hands down. Good, good, good. Um, all right. So introductions. Uh, like I said, I'm Joseph Flayev. I'm an agile coach and trainer. Uh, I run Whitewater Projects, uh, where we do all the coaching and training. And if you want to reach me, Joseph at whitewaterprojects.com. And Derek, can you introduce himself? And I am Derek Heather, and I am an enterprise agile coach and trainer with Leading Agile. And you can reach me at the email address, Derek, at leadingagile.com. All right. A little bit about the, the vision of the ACP. If you're here, you probably have the idea of what we're doing, um, that we're creating a uh, content guide so that people know what's in the ACP. And that's really the, the vision is that this will be the go-to place uh, for any information people want to know about the ACP. When I'm teaching classes, I always get the question, what's the best book? What's the best book? What book do you recommend, Joseph? And I want to be able to say, I recommend that you go to the ACP wiki on the community of practice. Um, as time goes on, we want this to be the place where the, the developers of the questions for the ACP come to go, oh, okay, what's, what's the latest way things are working? What's the latest information? This is, wants to be the place to make those things happen. So that's, that's what we want to uh, have this place be um, and how, how we want to see it um, working for everyone. It's a question about how many people are on the call. So far, there are seven of us on the call. And uh, we're still growing. So um, if you missed the beginning of it, we just did introductions. And you can watch the, the replay video later for that. So that's sort of the vision. Derek, did anything to add to that vision? Or did I cover it all? I think you pretty much covered it. Just, just to restate, and I also get these questions. Everybody's like, what's the best book? And, you're, and PMI, in order to kick start the ACP, they identified a, uh, several books. Uh, now, you know it, it's almost unfair because this, you know agile is a community-driven, you know, practice and processes, and so one book does not rule them all, and so that's why this community guide is community-driven, and that's why we can certainly initially pull content from those books, but then don't forget there's a whole wealth of information out there that we all know about, and so this is going to have this rapid iteration, whereas you know books. You know, you know the, the cycle time on, on book publishing. So I, I would expect this community guide to mature 
much more rapidly, and we can always reference those books in the future, but uh, we really do need something that's going to scale and iterate quickly, as, just as this exam and this uh, certification will. So the guide is going to be more mm, agile. Correct. <laughs> than <a> Correct. <laughs> All right. So that's uh, that's the vision of where we're headed. Come on, computer. There we go. Is that, that's next. All right. Look at how okay. fast we're moving here. About eight minutes in. So Derek's going to give us a little demo of the wiki and how it works after I uh, transfer um, control. And that does not look at anything like me. <laughs> <laughs> here you go, Derek. You should have it. Got control? Okay. So I'm going to show my screen. And there we go. And Joseph, can you confirm, do you see the PMI Agile Community Practice page? Yes, I do. OK, excellent. So the thing is, we do not want to make this too complicated. All right, We want to do this uh, as simply or iteratively as we possibly can. And when we were thinking about doing the Community Guide and being it's a wiki, we kept asking ourselves, what would Wikipedia do? So I've edited different topics on Wikipedia, and so I have certain expectations, and, and I'm sure uh, others have as well. And so you just have to keep asking yourself, what would Wikipedia do when you're doing these pages? They don't have to be perfect. The big thing is, is we want to get a nice base level on there. Then we want some community involvement. We want people to get engaged, just like they do on Wikipedia, and then we'll start you know, maturing these, uh, th these different pages. So you'll see, in order for this to work, if you want, you can either follow along watching, me share, watching my shared screen, or you can log in. Uh, you would log into the PMI website. You would navigate to the Azure Community Practice site. And if you see my, my, uh, my browser, I just created a couple simple links. Makes things a heck of a lot easier. And the reason why, you know, you, if you've been on the PMI website, you know there's a lot of information. And so the community of practice and even more so the, the community guide are nested several layers deep into the site. So I would recommend that you create shortcuts. Okay. So we're going to assume I logged into the Agile Community of Practice. And under the community, pay, uh, the community button, there's a drop down and it allows you to go to wikis. I click on that, and that really is the, the wiki homepage. Within the wiki homepage, we're going to scroll down, and we're going to see we can explore the existing communities. Okay, here we are, ACP support team, and nested within that is the community guide for the ACP. Now, we might move that up at some point, give it a little bit more real estate, but right now, this is uh, one of the launch pads to get to the community guide. All right. So let me just quickly show. Here's the ACP support team. Okay, link to the backlog, content outline, things like that. And let's go directly to the community guide. Okay. So think of this as the home page for the community guide. All right. It's just going to explain you know what we're trying to do, what the Agile Bach is, which Agile Bach was a topic of conversation quite a bit last year when they launched the ACP. Uh, and you can read about that. Below, you're going to see the uh, actual the community guide and how it's broken down into tools and techniques and knowledge and skills. All right. Every one of these pages, so Joseph and I made sure that the initial launch of this had links to all of these. So you click on any one of these. I'm going to Click on Team Space, and here's a wiki page. All these wiki pages are at different levels of development or maturity, okay? And that's okay. We need your help just to get them to, you know, get them good enough. And again, we're, we're going to start to iterate. So I'm going to show you, again, we're going to keep it as simple as possible. And I'm going to navigate back to this page because I want you to be able to find your own reference material. Wiki markup reference. Okay, This is the guide. If you use Wikipedia, it uses a wiki markup language. The tool that PMI is using is not 
Wikimedia. All right, it's using another tool, and so therefore there are some unique uh, unique markups that you would use to to, uh, to visualize what you're writing. Uh, for the most part, it's like Wikipedia, but I'm just going to reference that page. I'm going to open it in a new tab just so I can click back and forth. Okay. And there it is. And remember, if, if this is going a little fast for you or if you miss something, this is being recorded and we'll, we'll post it up on the, on the community of practice so you yes. can get to it. Thanks. So here's the reference page. All right. It shows you how to make bold text, italics, just like everything you would expect within, you know, be it like a Word document or a content editor or something like that. Uh, different sizes. We're going to create, you know, you can create uh, uh, bulleted lists, numbered lists. You can upload images. You can upload documents, all kinds of things. And then there's some special tags as well that uh, instead of writing a whole bunch of code, you just put in a tag called cloud and you would see a, a text cloud appear or uh, a table of contents. Instead of trying to write out the table of contents, just put a or a, a TOC and it'll and it'll pop it right in there and I'll show you what that looks like. Back on the wiki page you can also see who's editing what and when. Uh, that's just valuable if you're just curious. Hey, what's what's the latest and greatest? What's been updated recently? You can click on this and it'll take you right to the page. So I'm going to show you a page that need or I'm going to show you a page that looks good and that one of those would be collocated teams. So this is what we're going for. First things first is you're going to see, if you edit a page, you're going to see the time, date, stamp, and who you are, what you edited. You can identify categories or tags for a page. Uh, because the wiki inclu includes other groups within the community of practice, you might get lost in the navigation. And so if you add a tag, what will happen is it gives you a navigation point. An example, I click on PMI ACP and it will give you a list of all pages in the wiki that are related to the PMI ACP. So we want to make sure that we include that PMI ACP tag in each one of our pages. And then in this case, co-located teams is related to knowledge and skills versus tools and techniques. Um, you have a table of contents here. You can show it or hide it. And this is a common structure you're going to see in every one of these pages. Right? This table of contents, every page is going to have this structure. All right? uh, and if you want to go back and look at Wikipedia, you can see kind of how people, the, the style which people use this. Where we have our overview. Uh, this is if you nested links. This is where uh, this page would appear within the, uh, the exam outline, um, the histories. We want to make sure that when we write you know, some information, remember that this is a reference guide. And so we want to identify external links. Where did you get this data? Which book did you get this data? Um, Derek? Yes? I think it was TeamSpace that you wanted to show. That, that's did I want to show TeamSpace? Out. Yeah. Well, let's do this. I'm going to search. <laughs> I'll get to TeamSpace really search. quickly. Team space. I'm going to do a full search. Is it working? It's working. Okay. Team space. There we go. It's still white on my screen. There it is. All right. Okay. This is a good example <laughs> of a page. You'll notice we've got a table of contents. There's our overview, importance, the main body. Uh, we have a nice uh, image referenced. We have external links. This uh, indicates external links. In these cases, these are good agile terms, agile words, let's call them. You'll notice that if they have a different color, uh, usually means that we need to create a page. So let's verify that. Yes, page not found. That's OK. We can create the page here if we wanted to. Big thing is just get the content in there. And as this thing matures, we're going to start cross-linking uh, so there's a little bit more organic discovery between the pages. All right. So I'm going to scroll down here. 
excellent, excellent, excellent. We've got external references. And then at the bottom, got a nice external link. See also this, or here's some external references right here. Excellent, excellent. And we can link to them as well. If you're curious about the format, you know, uh, of how we're going to put our references, just, again, get it in there. We can always go back and edit it, um, add links to it, add ISBN numbers, whatever. It, it, it doesn't matter. Just get something in there. Then at the end of our sprints or iterations, Joseph, myself, can review this, provide feedback, and we can get it to a level of maturity that everybody, everybody will be happy with. So now you're going to see all this information. I'm just going to click at it just so you can see what's going on behind the scenes. Okay. It's so slow because my screen doesn't refresh to see it. Okay. There it is. Okay. So some things to think about. I don't recommend you click the visual page or the visual link. Uh, I don't know about Joseph, but it never works for me. If anything, it'll yeah, clear Yeah, it never out. really works. No. Yeah, it clears out everything that you've written. So stay on the wiki markup page or preview. Okay, so here's your wiki markup. I want to preview what it looks like. There it is. All right. I'm going to go back to the wiki markup page. There we go. You notice here's the TOC tag. Okay, instead of having to write everything out, just put in the TOC tag and it'll grab each one of these levels, overview, reference, that type of thing. You'll Is notice it possible to zoom your screen in a little bit so we can see the words a little bit bigger. Let's see if I can do that. It might not be, that's okay. Mm, I got a pretty high resolution. Goodness. That's okay. I don't want to delay the. Oh, there we go. Give me a second. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to zoom it. Can you see this? No worries. Okay. I can see. Okay. It's just you're going to see. Like if you if you've ever done HTML, it's like the break tag. But again, I'm going to reference back over here. Did a quick search. I'm going to go up here. Okay. So in this case, it's like an HTML tag. In this case, we don't want to do a break. But otherwise, if you want to do a hard break, break tags, line items, so I know that this is a bulleted list here. And if you've done any HTML editing, you're going to recognize some of these tags. You can use HTML in these page if you feel more comfortable with that. You don't need to necessarily do it in the wiki markup language. And then down here, you're going to see that. Now, it's not just writing text. You know, you're actually going to you can use this WYSIWYG, uh, th these, uh, this toolbar up here to actually insert external links, images, anchors, whatever you need to do. Format it. Keep it simple. Bold, italicized, underlined. Um, but again, keep it simple. Just get the content in there. When you're done, you can make sure you add your page tags. In this case, knowledge and skills and PMI, ACP. If you want to, you can, up, you can actually have downloadable attachments. Um, if you're going to put an image in a page, I'm going to show you how to do that in just a, just a second. So I'm going to cancel out of this page. So again, if you want to see a good example, if you want to see a good example, go to TeamSpace and see what Joseph has done. Now we're going to go to a page that needs some work. Okay. Give me. So I'm going to go to. I'm going to search for, say, TDD. We'll do a full search. All right. Under quality products. OK, there it is. TDD test first development. OK, so here we see a pretty naked page. But it looks like someone was nice enough, probably someone from the experience report team was nice enough to add a link, which is excellent. Don't forget, we have excellent experience reports on the community practice 
site that you can download and review. Uh, it would be excellent if you know of some of them to link them right from, from here as well. Some people are going to, or a lot of people are going to come to the site looking for information, so let's really utilize all the resources that we have at our disposal. PMI wants us to get as much of this content into the site as possible. I recognize that there's a, there's a lot, you know, the majority of the information is out there, but if possible, you know, if, if you have to, you link to an image that's out on the web. If possible, you have an image, you download it, you upload it into the, uh, into the PMI website, and then you can reference where you got the image. But it's better to have more internal uh, content than have to link out to everything. So I'll show you a couple tools in the, um, in the collaboration tools time that you can use for drawing and stuff like that. So. Yeah. So here, so I already know that there's a couple of steps in this process that uh, you know, like adding an image, it's hard to add, you know, once you can't go into the page and just add an image. Uh, that is, you can add an external link to an image, but you can't upload a file and reference it. So I have an idea, well, I'm going to do test-driven or, or, you know, TDD. I know that I need a file or an image that doesn't exist. So I'm going to go to file management. Okay. I'm going to go to images. I am going to choose a file. Desktop, blog images, and let's see if I've got TDD cycle 150 is what I'm going to use. Okay. I'm going to upload that file. Okay. So there it is. All right. So I am going to go back to whoops, the TDD page. Now I'm going to edit it just to show you what I want to do. So here's the, the default framework. And I'm just going to pull it right into the body area. I'm going to click the image button. And it's looking in the image repository within the community of practice. So there's TDD. Now you can do a line right, a line left. Wikipedia commonly has images on the right content well, so I'm going to say a line right. OK, that. And you can see, there it is. Up is just the upload directory, images, and there's the name of the file. I'm going to quick preview it. There it is. OK. Uh, you can get a little bit more elaborate. That is, if you want to add a caption or something like that or, or make it clickable, you can do that. Again, reference, reference this page right here. It explains when displaying pictures, if you want to do a lot more stuff with it, like this picture right here has, you know, just reference this page. Um, I am not going to be able to, uh, you know, write a lot of text from scratch that is, oh, test-driven development. Well, again, you might find a website or a book that has excellent content. Um, so just to kickstart this, I went out to Wikipedia and I went to Wikipedia and I just copied some text. There we go. And I am going to clear out the reference tags. We can always go back and add those later. And I'm going to pre preview that. And there we go. We have some initial content under TDD. And it's on Wikipedia. Not, not that we are going to, by default, agree with what's out on Wikipedia. But again, it's something to get started with. And we can review this and we, we can update it. Now, I'm going to go back. What else are we missing? Well, table of contents. I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to actually add a TOC tag. T O C. Now, when you preview, it's not going to show that tag. 
I'm going to preview and it's just going to show the TOC tag. It's not going to show the entire table of contents. There it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. It's always good, like I'm thinking back from uh, MS Word from time, five, ten years ago, like save often. Yes. There we go. So here's our table of contents. Show it, hide it. Okay. Here is our initial text. Uh, if you want, you know, we're going. I'm going to add. If you do copy text out of another resource, you need to reference it. I did. Yeah. Did you already add that An external link? I'm going to. So I'm going to add the uh, the link at the bottom here that I'm referencing the text. So um, in this case. Added a one, one, and I'm going to add a extra link. There we go. The title is Wikipedia. EDD. And I'm going to open a new window. And when we preview it, we'll see the reference here. We'll see the reference down here. We can get a little bit fancier. That is, uh, if you want, we can make a superscript on it. Again, preview it. There's your superscript. There's your superscript. The next thing I could do, which I'm not going to do right now, is I can actually create you know, a link from here, add an anchor tag down here, just so we can all link it all together. I'm just going to save this. And that is pretty much it. I've saved it. Going to refresh it. It's going to show that I was the person that did it, and when. You could go back and you can see a, a revision history, just like you can with Wikipedia, to see who changed what and when. At a future point, I'm sure we can assign. You can be uh, like a, a watcher. It's like every time someone updates this page. If you really are passionate about something and people are in there editing this page on a regular basis, just subscribe to the page. And you can get notified when someone edits this page so you can always go in and, and look at it, see what they change, and you know, uh, at least start a, engage, engage them, start a conversation with them, and come to you know, a, better, a better product. Um, let's see. I think that would be all I would want to show for right now. Okay, Derek, there's a question. Um, is there a preference on how much content should be copied slash used from the PMI reference books versus other websites like Wikipedia and, or other content? I would say that if you have, I would say if you have the books, use use them. Yeah. And but don't go out and buy them just to update this. I mean, there's right. a lot of you know, all, these books are referenced online as well. You know, so and and. Uh, these book, the list of books are going to change in time. So, yeah. Think, and what, remember what we what we talked about the that we want this resource to become the place where the people who are writing the questions and people who are looking at what should the content outline be, we want them to come here to get the content to get where the things are headed, not go to the back to the books, right? Not that we want to displace the books necessarily, but we want to add and move forward from the books. Right. And and to be clear, say two of the books or a few of the books will have content in them that aren't necessarily contradictory, but they're not. They don't have the exact same. You know, uh, they're not exactly the same. And so, well, what do we do about that? Well, they could be contradictory actually in places. Okay, <laughs> but my because point there is, are multiple paths, right? Good so practice. that so there is the opportunity. If you have both books and you recognize that these are contradictory, you would go say under TDD. And you would say, here is one method. 
show your reference. This is contradictory to this one and have the reference. All it's going to do is help people that are taking, you know, not just taking the exam. This is, I see this as more than just something for somebody to take the exam. It's really just a central repository for more information. Yeah. And it is nice the fact that they wouldn't, these readers wouldn't necessarily have to go buy both. They wouldn't have to buy both books if, as editors, were able to put references to both books within this. If, it, if they're really interested in one path versus the other, then they can go get the book. But if not, they can at least be introduced to the different approaches. Did that, uh, any other questions? So, I, don't think so. Yeah. I just want Sorry. and I just want to show one more bit that I think uh, is is pretty interesting. Um, let's say it's for ATDD is another page. Let's see if I can find that search. ATDD. Oops, that's not going to find anything. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, didn't like that. Odd. Well, I'm also including all of the categories, so if I would have filtered oh. them. It'll find it's it's a fully indexed search, so you know PMI's website's pretty big, so it's crawling. Okay, here we go. Hmm. Well, that's not what I was expecting. <laughs> Let's go back. I'm gonna go back home. Let's see if I can find it this way. Community guide. Here we go. Test drift development, let's try quality. Quality standards, product quality. Hmm. Let's save that for another day, perhaps. Uh, All right. Let, actually, I can do this. I'm going to copy it right into the TDD page just so you can see what I want. I want to show an example of if you want to like in this case, it says, you know, write a test, fail the test, refactor it. This is a nice little, uh, if you want to actually do a little code and you don't want the wiki language getting in the way of things. You can add two at signs on either side. And then you're going to actually see it's going to appear as code. So you can use this if you're referencing something. If you want to say, I'm taking this as an excerpt from a book or something like that. Again, it's just little bells and whistles that you can find. And this is just going to happen over time. You're going to tinker with this and find out what works. Um, but again, if... Uh, the big thing is not to have really fancy formatted content. Yeah. It's about having content. That that's the goal. Simple and informative. Uh -huh. And that is all I have. Okay. Hey, we have two more questions. Uh, okay. One says, "Can we get the links to the pages like the markup guide sent out after the webinar?" Certainly. I think yeah, that's that's an easy one. And another question was. Uh, um, do we want to include a section like tips for, for the ACP uh, for things that are a little tricky? For instance, if the retro meeting is the first thing in the planning <laughs> meeting <laughs> for the ACP test, but mm -hmm. we know that most of the teams do it following the demo. I think we could. I think we could create a tips and uh, a tips and tricks. I think it falls outside of the content outline, or I'm sorry, outside the community guide. But what we could do is 
I'm going to go to all pages. Remember, this is the, the whole wiki. And I'm going to do... And the wiki includes everything, right? every bit of knowledge that we're collecting here at the... So I would practice, say this. I don't know if... TV. I don't know if how PMI would feel if we're telling them tips and tricks on passing the exam. But I can say if the page doesn't exist. It's a wiki. Anyone can create a page. <laughs> create if it was page. created, people might use it. <laughs> right. And so you would say tips and tricks, and then all you have to do is on the if you think that it's a little tricky, go to the retrospective page on the wiki and point back to that tips and tricks. And, and I would also say, you know, for, for that one, for example, on the page that talks about retrospectives, to call that out in, you know, in a box or something that says, hey, this is what you need to know for the exam, that, hey, it's like this. Similarly, things like uh, the, the information about the, the scrum artifacts in the exam are Scrum artifacts from the old Scrum Guide, not from the current Scrum Guide. The scrum, current Scrum Guide does not have a burndown chart as a, a Scrum artifact. Mm. It has an increment of, of working product as the artifact that replaced that. So, but that's not what you want on the exam. You want to have a burndown guide on the exam. Right. So I would say whoever did this retrospective page, they did a really good job. Um, so in this case, so current practice, okay. So current practice, see also. Uh, I mean, if we want to say tips and tricks, you know, you could put it in here. But this is what this is where I think it will help uh, help change how PMI has done this. Someone's going to go in if they're writing, doing test questions, and they're going to see tips and tricks, and they're going to see this saying, "This is tricky. We don't want a tricky exam. We do not want the ACP to be." another right. CMP. And so I think this would help give feedback to those who are writing test questions that, you know what, maybe we need to fix this. It doesn't do us any good trying to trick, you know, test takers. Yeah, you know, so, uh, Amy, follow, Amy followed up with saying it would be nice to easily find those tip items, the ACP, instead of scouring the entire wiki. Maybe we have a, a tips and trips link page then, so when you write a tip in, in the the document page, you mm -hmm. link, you, you make a link to it on the tips and trips, tips and tricks page or something like that. You know what? I'm going to do it right now. Justin, whatever. Tips and all right, there it is. Tricks. <laughs> okay, here's a tips, uh, tips and tricks, and I'm going to save it. Okay, there's Oops. the page. And I am going to take it one step further. <laughs> so it's kind of I think of it as orphan because it's uncategorized right now. So I'll quickly go in there, right. and I will link it to PMI ACP. All right. And the reason why that's important is because now, because it's linked in that, I can click on PMI ACP, and people can navigate down to. Oh, where is it? Should it be right here? Oh, there we go. That's helpful. It's on the next page. There we go. So thank you, whoever uh, gave that question or recommendation. Yep, that's the way we do it. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Amy. Any other questions? Um, make sure I got all these. Next steps in the webinar. Can get. I'm just making sure that I've answered all the questions. OK. Nope. I think we've got them all. So with that, I think oh, there's another one. Does PMI have a plan to allow access to external people? No. Ah, that's an excellent question. So PMI, well, I think it would be a good thing, though Thank we you. have to play by PMI's rules. Exactly. I think what happens there, I think it would be very, very powerful if those who wrote the books contributed to the content or the community guide. I would like to see you know, Mike Cohn and others contribute. That being said, if, so, if there are external resources that want access to say, hey, we have valuable 
information in our publications, then what I would recommend is simply get, if they have a, uh, there's actually two parts of this I want to say. One, at any time, they can become a PMI member, just simply a PMI member. By being a paid member, they get access to the ACP, I'm sorry, the, the, the community of practice, and they can go in there and then they can start to add references to their materials at any time. Um, on the other, the flip side of that is there is the approved list of reading material. That's a whole nother mechanism, you know, a whole nother process that is outside of our control. It is a, it's above us, but my point is that list will hopefully become obsolete the faster we get this community guide up, uh, the more the, you know, there's less value of actually having that specific reading list. Right. So I would encourage anyone that you know that has written material that is good, you know, and that's the other thing is PMI wants stuff that is versioned or published. They don't want, you know, if it's a good example is Mike Cohn had the risk register, you know, and it was on his blog, but it wasn't under like CMMI or, or somewhere. It wasn't under, you know, wasn't published somewhere. And so that was something they wanted uh, wanted to happen. And so if it's a book, it's excellent because you you know you can reference it in so many different ways. Again, just encourage them register with PMI. I think it's worth it's the value of paying you know, whatever it is to be a PMI member. It you know it, it would encourage them to come in and start editing the community guide and adding their material. So there's a request for um, more uh, edit, more, uh, I'm sorry, more example pages. So okay. pull, pull out, you know, maybe two or three example pages beyond the um, team space. So, but team space is a good good one. So we'll, we'll grab it. Team space is a good one. Um, Osmotic Communications is a good one. Yep. And yep. what we could do is we could always follow up with... Uh, with an email to the attendees yep. to say, take a look at these. These are good examples. Yep. I mean, ones that are blank, bad examples. Ones, you know, <laughs> but, but, in, but in the case, like I said, Osmotic Communications or, or, or TeamSpace, you know, those are good examples. And like I said, we can, we can send out a list. There's a question about what about including some of the content in our blog content? You mean the COP blog content, Amy? I think that's what you mean, and that would be a big yes. Mm -hmm. I think that's. I think they definitely want to have those kinds of things. Anytime that we can reuse within the community of practice, again, it, there's yep. a wealth of information. Anytime that we can cross-reference that, I think there's a lot of value in that. We don't have to create things from scratch. You know, there's blog posts, there's also the um, experience reports. Experience reports is the knowledge shelf on the PMI main website, not the community of practice. Those would be good good articles and things to, to reference. Because mm -hmm. um, you're pointing people back into PMI, and PMI would be very happy about that. <laughs> um, there's next up. Uh, yes, Mizzou, um, there's a, there's a, he was, there, there's a question about the agilebach.org website. Mm -hmm. um, take a look at this Oh, you've got the page up right now. Um, on the community guide to the ACP right. page, um, this little thing that's written about the Agile box, there was a whole lot of discussion about it, and we don't need to go into it all here. But <laughs> we can talk with you offline if you'd like to, to hear, understand the, the context of that. But you just to, to say that that's not part of PMI. Correct. And to be very, very everything. clear, we did make the request to PMI that they open this up. The more they, the more transparency, the more they open it up, yeah. the better. But yep. that being said, they said no. Every, you know, the community guide is going to be contained within the PMI domain, and they will not, so, you know, they they will not go outside their domain. It's just what it, those are the rules that we have to operate. Those are the constraints we need to operate within. And so, not that there isn't good content out there, but as it comes as the official community guide for the ACP, PMI wants it all enclosed within the PMI domain. And we want it, this to be good 
clean data that, like, this is what's really on the exam. We really know what's going on with this. And there's so, other places out there that you might not trust the data as well, right, if it's outside of PMI itself. Right. And I don't know if this is, I mean, if you can see this page was last modified back in September when this was more of a, a conversation. There, there might not be as much value of actually having that listed about Agile Block. There might not be much value of listing that there anymore. I don't know. Uh, if there's complaints from the community saying people are going to this location and it's contradictory to the information that's within the community guide, then okay, then maybe there's value of listing saying these are good sites and these are bad sites. We're not in the business of doing that. It's all about just doing the best we can, create a good community guide for this certification. So at any time that we no longer need to list Agilebach here on this page, then, then we can easily we can easily remove it. Yeah, but that was a there's a discussion about it. So mm -hmm. all right, can we link? No, we don't want to link to the Agilebach site. I think no, they've been very clear that, that we, PMI has been very clear that we, we're not going to do that. Okay. All right. Do I see if I can stop showing my screen and pass it back over to you? Yep. Actually, I can do that, I think. Okay. I can take, I can take that back. I will take control. <laughs> Make a presenter. Yes. There we are. Oops, you don't need to see all my wiki, my all my chat screens. <laughs> all right, and no, that doesn't look like Derek. So, I wanted to talk a little bit about the team structure um, and what we're doing, and you know what kind of work you'll be you'll be doing. Basically, the, what he just did, developing that content, typing that information in. That's what we need you to do. And so, uh, we're going to go through the list. And uh, of of people that we have, and I'm going to try and pull that up right now. Oops, it's right over here. That one. So we have a list of you all, and it's one of these here. Um, That's what, I wasn't showing what I wanted to. I'm sorry. Um, we have a list of, of all the folks that are on the team, and we're going to first ping back to everybody and, and make sure that, that they're still interested, everybody's interested in, in participating and contributing. I know the, the eight of us on this call are all interested, and, and there are a few others that responded but weren't able to attend the webinar today. Um, so we want to... Uh, Make sure that people are still interested and, and active, wanting to be active. And then we're going to group you, just plop you in groups together. You'll get to know each other. Um, and that way, we'll be able to um, have people work in groups instead of having to be the lone ranger by themselves out there. So we're, we're thinking of regular scrum size teams, so five to nine people per team. We've got a good number of people here. We could have quite a few teams going. Um, especially when we have more people coming onto the team all the time, really. So that's, that's what we're planning on doing, um, but we need to reach out to everybody. I, don't, I can't just like say, here's who you are and what team you're working on. Um, we do have the, here, that's where it was. Yeah, just to give you an idea, we have uh, 42 people listed on our team. Right. 42 people have, have voiced interest in, in editing the community guide. Yeah, so you can see how that would, uh, sorry, I'm trying to talk and think at the same time, how, how we could have lots of teams going by that point. Where is the, I'm trying to find the backlog. Backlog should be, if you navigate to... Um, I'm on the community guide to the ACP 
page? It, it would be under uh, ACP support team. If you go to the root wiki, click on ACP support team. Oh, that's right. That's right. And then you will find uh, the current state. It's listed under backlog. So it's good so that all you can see how, they, how you do this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, backlog. There we go. Here's current the current state. state. See it right here? I'll wait for a second to let the screens catch up. So you click on this current state. That'll show you where things are and who's who's worked on them. Um, you can see that we've got some that are in, in process, some that are done. Um, stubbed, that means that if you look at this relative sizing one here, all it has is the outline. Blah, that's it. Oh, look, it's got the overview phrase set in there. But other than that, it has nothing. All of these pages are that. They're just the outline. So those are the pages that want to be filled out. Um, again, you'll be working in teams. So it will be not on your own. Um, we're going to leave it to the teams to set up their own collaboration approach, because you'll be self-organizing teams, right? Just like an agile group. So um, We'll want to work work our way through that product backlog, top to bottom, just starting our way through. If you don't know anything about the topic that your team is, is working on, that's OK. Um, I, Derek and I were talking. It's like, you know, way back in the day when I, when I took my um, PMP, the way I studied for the PMP was I wrote the, the project management guide for the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center while I was studying for the PMP. So every section in the in the Fred Hutch guide was my studying <laughs> for the exam. So you know you don't have to know it already. You just have to know you can find it, right? That's the that's the, the wisdom in in that is you don't have to know everything. You just have to know where to look to find your answers. Right. So you, some people in the teams are going to emerge. I mean, I'll give you an example. I know uh, Amy out there. Was very pa is very passionate about Kanban. You know, cool. she she knows it. She could just write it organically, write it. Whereas others on the team may be like, what is this Kanban stuff? You know, and she could then direct them to different uh, different con different content out there. But as a team, they're going to wind up with a better product. Some people know a lot about the pro uh, of the topic. Some don't. But again, as a team, they're going to have a better collective understanding at the end. I think it's going to it's going to organically grow. Some people will be leaders in this situation. Some people will be leaders right. in that situation. So, um, As far as your teams working together, however you want to work is great. Um, you know, there's things like freeconferencecall.com, which is a great conference calling tool. Um, I don't know if you've ever worked with, with these tools before. Kaku, Trello, LeanKit, Google Docs, obviously, we're using here. Um, but I'll just show you a few of these right now. Um, Google Docs, obviously, is, is just Google with the docs, right? I've got a bajillion of them here that I've got shared, both things that are my family, Disneyland planning, <laughs> as well as uh, stuff for the PMO, ACP guide, and things like that. Um, Kaku. Kaku is a great, great tool. Um, I'm signed in here to Kaku. It is a, a drawing tool, um, but you can use it for collaboration. So here's... Here's a, a, a tool that you can use, a way you can use it here. Multiple people can sign into this, right? You got 50 people signed in. Um, and you have all these little cards down here at the bottom. Oh, I'm not editing. Hold on, hold on. Give me the edit mode. Stream link, full screen. Edit. OK, here we are. Yeah, the, uh, the COP leadership, we had a retrospective about a year ago. And we were using Kaku. Yeah. Uh, to help to, to, to be able to do that, because we were all over the place. Yeah, here I was drawing all over the screen. Um, but you can see, I, if, if I'm sitting here in Seattle and Derek is off in, where are you? These days? I'm in Baltimore. Atlanta right yeah. now, or DC, where? Today I'm in Baltimore. Baltimore, all right. So Derek can say, well, what things went well? well he could say, I, 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 Joseph could say, um, you know, screen shares. Whatever. That's, of course, that would be a stupid thing to say, but you want to add more information about it. But now, if Derek was logged into this, he could see that right away. 
and then you could you know do your dot votes or whatever you want to do that way. So it's a great tool for for collaborating on that. You can also use it for creation of the diagrams, right? So in that team space one, you saw that picture of the the space and all those things. You could create that with Kaku. I wasn't using Kaku at that point, um, and so what I did is I made it in the tool I know really well, PowerPoint. So I created it in PowerPoint and saved the page as a JPEG. So you can go to Save As and you save it as a JPEG, and it'll save the page as a JPEG. And then you just edit it, and away you go. So you know, there's cheater ways around some stuff. If you don't have Visio or some other drawing tool, um, Kaku is a great one. I would use this now instead of that, but you know, sometimes I still go back and use. Um, and Kaku's free. Um, it limits you know, the free version limits the number of saves you can do or something like that. Number, of, but the the paid version isn't very expensive either. Um, another tool that I love and use is um, Trello. So my wife and I use it together as a family to, you know, do our our uh, own personal kanban. kanban. Yep, personal kanban right here. So I've got the the to do backlog here the today's stuff that we need to get done, and then whatever I'm working on in the day, right? And it's all online. Um, there's an iPhone app for it that's really the same thing. It's a really good app. Um, it's not so good in an iPad, but it's... And it shouldn't cost you anything. doesn't cost me diddly. Nothing. So as a team, if you go, hey, let's use that Trello thing. Let's use that Kaku thing. Um, those are great tools. You could also use Lean Kit. Um, I find that it takes more work to get up than Trello does, but it, it does some of the similar stuff, you know, your Kanban list. Um, if you all have favorite tools that I didn't mention here, um, send them to us and we'll distribute them out to the team or we'll make a central repository or something that we can we can make that happen so that people can, can uh, share things and, and collaborate better together. All right, so that's the collaboration tools. Uh, we're going to start iterations here. Um, this is the proposed schedule um, starting on the April 11th, 25th. So that'll be the start of the iteration will be April 11th, uh, which is, I believe, a Thursday. Um, and they're every two weeks, so you'll have two weeks and you'll deliver. Um, what we will do is come together in a session very much like this. Probably we'll be using uh, GoToMeeting instead of a GoToWebinar. It's the same tool, but from an interface perspective. Um, but what it does is allows everyone to share their screens easier and collaborate and talk together. Um, instead of this, I use web, GoToWebinar all the time, so I just set this up as a GoToWebinar by default mentally. Probably should have done GoToMeeting, but it's OK. And so you, you will then, as a team, demo to all of the whole team what you did. Basically, you'll just walk us through, well, we talked about this and this and this. We found this was really good, but this, this information was contradictory, so this is how we put it in. And as a larger group, we'll kind of go, yep, that's cool. Or, yeah, maybe we should you know, reference this other thing and, or, or whatever. And hopefully, we'll just start cranking these suckers out and be getting them done quickly. All right, so any more questions, please type them into your box because we're running out of time. I see one question here. Let me open the question box. And all right. Um, da, 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 da. Any questions? Is the internet here? Is the intent here to have just enough information for each of these pages and open it up to the community users to add further content. A absolutely. Actually, the, right now, anyone can add. If somebody wanted to, they could go into those pages and start adding information. Love it. That would be awesome. Um, the, the, obviously, we always want to go in and be checking and making sure that people aren't you know, saying things that are completely crazy. But, uh, but yeah. Right, but, but just like Wikipedia, there was a critical mass. You know, there was. We need to reach a critical mass where exactly. it becomes the de facto, or it becomes the place that people go to. Whereas right now, we need to build build that content to make it be that destination. 
and then and then but you know just like Wikipedia people are going to be encouraged you know, some there will be agreements and disagreements but what will happen is we're going to have better content as a result yep yep iron will sharpen iron and we will have very sharp pages all right with that um, unless there are other questions I think it's time to go so we will be reaching out to you all getting confirmation that yep we're all participating I know you guys are all participating guys and gals are all participating but um, want to make sure that we get other people involved as well and can put it together enough teams and then we'll we'll start running with this um, I will send out an email today to the team to the big list and just say all right confirm your participation because <laughs> we're forming teams and then hopefully by the end of this week we will have those the, the teams all formed and I'll shoot out start with this one to each team right and, and you'll have a a, a link to a, a wiki page and away you'll go sound good sounds excellent all right well thank all right. you all for coming go ahead Dirk I was just going to say thank you, everyone. Yeah. All right. And uh, this will be posted up on the wiki or on the website whenever we get it posted. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty soon, we hope. All right. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.